Yeah, so what we're going to do, we're going we're to cover everything that you need to know or would want to know about fixing an iris defect. Between the three of us, I think we've got every possible way you could do that covered. So I'm going to start with uh, femto-assisted corneal tattoo, which I think is probably the easiest way to solve the problem of glare, polyopia, and photophobia. So a traditional tattoo has been around for a long time, uh, decades. And so here's a typical case that we did a long time ago with a just needle technique. And you can cover that iris defect just by putting a couple hundred little spots of ink into the stroma with a, like a 30 gauge needle. And it works pretty well, but it has its drawbacks of uh, being very painful for the patient, can be painful for the doctor. Uh, there does, it's hard to see where the pigment's going a lot of times, so maybe you get about 80% the first time, have to come back and do more. Uh, it does cause some inflammation, pain, as I mentioned, and then that pigment can fade over time, and it doesn't really do a great job at blocking out the light unless you really are diligent in, in doing it completely, and it's difficult for large, large areas. So what about a better way to do that? And we've talked about this before this meeting, but a femto-assisted corneal tattoo is probably the way to go. It was reported back in 2009, but you can use a femtosecond laser to make a corneal pocket and then just simply put the pigment in that pocket. I've done over 200 cases now uh, using this technique. The first case I'm going to present is a 39-year-old paintball injury, traumatic cataract with an iris tear at 7 o'clock, complaints of edge glare and light sensitivity, it always closes one eye to cope. Uh, and has been wearing a contact lens but became intolerant. So many wonderful surgeons on my panel uh, especially could, could fix this with a surgical technique, but you can also place the pigment around there. And I'm gonna cut to a video. This is actually not his, his video, but you can actually do an anterior, well, this is his picture from the, from the procedure where you can see the iris defect through that green. And I put the channel right over the defect so you can just enter that channel to put the pigment in there. But then the video is actually one we used at the Academy. And if you can look real closely at the bottom of this video are two little iridotomies you see in there right next to that red line. That's what we're trying to cover. We're actually trying to just cover those iridotomies from an ICL case. And all we do is, is just go in there with a little Sinsky hook, open up that channel. You can see those two little iridotomies. And they are very far peripheral, but they can cause a lot of problems even though they're in that location. And then you just simply put the tattoo ink in that area. And you really can't squirt the ink in or inject it like I, I originally thought you could. You do need to dissect those pockets to allow the ink to actually go where you want it to. And it'll only go exactly where you put the ink. Uh, in other words, it doesn't tend to leak all the way around 360 if you just want to cover those two little spots. But that's basically all we do, just simply put it in those areas. And you can see that's gray in the photo before, but when you actually get in the cornea, it looks more like a blue uh, iris color. So for this guy, this is what he looks like post-op day one. You can tell which eye we did because he still has a little subconch hemorrhage there on that left eye. Uh, but it looks good. If you look a little closer, you can see that pigment overlying that iris defect. Uh, and then, of, of course, it's, it's even more obvious if you use a slit lamp. But it's a very thin layer of, of pigment uh, that ends up in that little pocket. But these little laser odotomies that I showed you in that video aren't benign. There's a 30-year-old myop came in. And you really don't see a problem with any iridotomy issue right here, but she had been to eight different doctors. All of them said, told her she was crazy. She had successful ICL surgery. She was 2015, stopped complaining about this glare issue. But if you lifted her lid, you can see one of those iridotomies is rather large. And there's probably a prismatic effect of the tear film against the upper lid that shoots that light up into that, that uh, even peripheral uh, hole. Um, so what we did with her was just make a partial uh, LASIK flap. You can actually start the LASIK flap and then abort it as soon as it's covered and put the pigment in there. There's a different kind of newer way to do it. And this is an early case, weren't very good at color matching, but she didn't care. She was happy with the way it looked and she didn't have to hold her eyelid, uh, her, her finger over her, her eyelid to kind of block that glare light. Temporal PIs aren't any better. Some people have written about maybe doing temporal PIs are better. Nope, they still come to see me for the same thing. And I'm going to argue when these, when these PA, PIs really bother people, this is probably the only way to treat these folks. You really can't suture them. Probably doesn't make sense to do a prosthesis. Uh, so much easier. You can customize it for the patient. We're getting better at the cosmetic appearance with, with the inks. Really no pain. It's just like LASIK. They cover really easily. 
and we just keep getting better and better at it. Here's a temporal iris defect. We see a lot of these from uh, intraoperative floppy iris syndrome. And so for those of you surgeons who aren't using Omidria and uh, don't think you need it, then stop sending me patients like this because you do need Omidria. And if you want to hear more about that, I'm going to plug the dinner program that Omeris is sponsoring uh, in a couple hours. So please bring your Valentine's date and come to our uh, talk on that. But we got good results with this lady. This is what she looks like afterwards. She was very pleased, no longer has edge glare. And these are some other examples. We've done full irises. You can do partial irises. Really can customize it however you want. And interesting, what about doing this for purely cosmetic? I'm not doing that currently, but can we use this technique to totally change iris cover, color? Is it a safe way to do it? Well, Dr. Ferrari in Paris is doing this. And you can go to his website. He's allowed me to share these slides with you. These aren't doctored or Photoshopped. This is a brown iris patient on the top, same patient on the bottom post. Here's another example, and yet here's a third example. He has tons of these examples where he's changing their iris color by doing corneal tattoos, 360s, using the femtosecond laser and then having to dissect a little bit larger on those, uh, on those areas. Because the femtosecond laser actually only goes out to about 9.5 millimeters in diameter, so if you're going to try to go all the way out to the limbus, you'll need to do some manual dissecting.